Welcome everyone. I'm Cindy Stovall from Creative Pinellas. Thank you for joining us today for the Professional Artist Grantee Conversation for 2022. Um, we have split these up into uh, two sessions. So we have five amazing artists with us today to talk about what they've been up to during the 2022 grant period. Um, and so we'll just jump right in with our artist laureate, Jake Ann Jones. Please introduce yourself to everyone, Jake Ann. Hi, my name is Jake Ann Jones. I am the artist laureate for this year at Creative Pinellas. I'm a writer. Um, um, I work in a, a variety of different uh, mediums with lots of great artists. Beautiful. And as, a, as an asterisk, I will give you the artist laureate um, is selected from the group of professional artists. Uh, they are recognized by Creative Pinellas as being a true partner and collaborator, sharing their skills and supporting Creative Pinellas' mission to uplift art and artists all across Pinellas County. So uh, Jake Ann will be involved, has been and will be involved in a number of projects during the grant period and we'll find out all about them in a minute. So let's go next to Shan Leah. Shan, welcome. Oh, thank you. Um, my name's Shan and uh, I'm a writer in Pinellas County. I'm based out of Dunedin. I uh, came from the fine art world, and when I felt that the stories weren't able to come through as much as I intended, I decided to try writing, and it turned out to be the right choice for me. So that's what I do and who I am. Beautiful. Okay, next up, Eileen Marquez. And I relocated to the St. Pete area three years ago this month. And as part of my painting process, I add fabric and other materials to my oil paintings to add the element of collage and texture to my work. I'm currently working on three different series of paintings whose messages are inspiration, diversity, self-importance, and acceptance. Beautiful, I love that. So next up we have Rachel Stewart. Welcome, Rachel. Um, hi, it's good to be here. My name is Rachel Stewart. Um, I live in St. Petersburg. I have my studio in my house here. And I am actually um, a professional sculptor. I've been um, doing um, three-dimensional wood carving for probably about 30 or so years. And then recently, in the last five years, I have switched to printmaking. But uh, the connection is I'm using my sculptural surfaces as um, part of my um, prints um, in um, paperwork that I'm, you know, now exploring. Yes. Lovely. And finally, we have Fred Rootman Woods. Welcome, Fred. Um, hi, my name is um, Fred Woods. I'm a painter and a uh, charcoal drawer and pencil. Um, originally from uh, Gainesville, moved to St. Pete um, eight years ago and enjoy my time here. Thank you. Lovely. Okay. So now we get to talk about what has been going on with you all during the grant period. Um, let's go ahead and start with Jake Ann as artist laureate. Um, you have kind of a unique uh, set of um, plans and, and work that you're creating and collaborating with Creative Pinellas on. And I know that you have been extremely busy during the grant period. So tell us about what you've been doing. Yes. So um, I, the artist laureate, for the artist laureate um, position, we decided that we would do interviews. I actually also write for the weekly challenger. So I spent a lot of time interviewing people. So I said, okay, well, why don't I just interview um, black and brown creatives in Tampa Bay? So we, are, I think, are on our fourth episode, um, and it's a mixed variety of, of um, all kinds of uh, artists, um, filmmakers, hip hop artists, writers, uh, theater people, singers. So it's great because um, there are lots of folks that are out here. There's so much talent out here, and so it's been great to share that. Um, I'm also in the process of putting together the festival, the, uh, the 
inaugural Tampa Bay Afrofuturism Festival with uh, Pinellas Diaspora Arts Project, which is um, a nonprofit that was started to elevate black and brown artists in Tampa Bay. So it's a three day festival and it's going to be really awesome. So I'm really in the middle of that. And then, of course, I'm writing my play for Pinellas Community Foundation. I mean, uh, that's my day job. Sorry. Pinellas Community Foundation is my day job. I work with the social justice fund there. So I know a lot of nonprofits because of my day job. But this nonprofit, uh, Pinellas Diaspora Arts Project, is one of the nonprofits that I met. I work with through there as well. Um, and yeah. yeah. And, and do you feel like this, you know, this process has given you more of an opportunity to kind of shine a light on the things that uh, are priorities for you? Well, yes, um, it, it has. I think that I think the best part of it has been able to um, alert other people to Creative Pinellas, let them know that it's here, that they should be looking to um, apply for grants um, uh, and explain exposing um, maybe more people to some of the artists of color who aren't yet uh, as well known here, or just maybe they, you know, they may have their own crowd, but this is just another element for them to sort of get ex exposed through. Beautiful, that's beautiful. Thank you, Jake Ann, thank you so much. All right, next up we have Shanlia. Shan, what have you been up to during the grant period as a professional artist grantee? Um, I actually made some major moves due to this grant. Um, I'll show you my first book. Uh, it's uh, Thieves, Beasts, and Men. It's a literary thriller. Um, that was traditionally published. Um, I was agented. I had a publishing house. And around the time that my second was about to start the process, <clears throat> I realized that uh, I guess the traditional publishing world had become something different in my head. I, I was disillusioned by the whole world. And so I decided uh, with this grant, which was actually some sort of like universal stamp of approval to start my own publishing house. So I launched the Postmodern Press and uh, Bands of a Small Hurricane is uh, what is the first release for the postmodern press. And it was all done under my imprint um, with my creative control and financial control. And I never looked back. So I, during this process, I did the unthinkable for her to a lot of people, which is uh, leave the traditional publishing world behind and kind of strike out on my own completely self-published. So that's what I've been doing. Can you find the information on, on your publishing house on your personal website, shanlinger.com? Um, you can find lots of information on this book and the my third release, which is due for fall of next year, on my website. Um, I do have a temporary page up for the Postmodern Press. Right now, it is really just serving to help me get this first launch out this year. And once I'm learning to run a publishing house has been miles above and beyond what I thought it was going to be. So once I feel like I've got it more of a fine-tuned machine, I do plan to open it up to other authors to create almost a bridge between traditional and self-publishing for them. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, that is, that's very exciting. I'm sorry that, uh, that you had to go through some, you know, difficult times to get to that point, but. Oh, I'm not at all. Sometimes, no, it was, sometimes yeah, things no. for a reason. I wouldn't yeah. have done anything different. Now I know, like the publishing world to me was this dream. And once I got there, I realized that they're all just a bunch of people trying to make the right decisions and we all are doing the same thing and their decisions shouldn't, shouldn't weigh more than my own. So exactly. if, if I hadn't have done it, I would have spent my whole life wondering what traditional publishing was like. And now I know, and I know that I don't need it. That is, uh, I love that. I love that confidence. And uh, if just the look of that book is any indication, uh, Postmodern is going to be very successful. So thank you. I appreciate it. Um, and thank you for sharing that with us, Shan. Next up, we're going to talk to Eileen Marquez. Eileen. What have you been up to? <laughs> uh, this grant has provided me with the time and resources to further develop two of the series of paintings I'm currently working on. 
from my first series, a series of portraits of inspiring women titled uh, the Goddess Series of Inspiring Women, it has allowed me the time to research and identify uh, exhibition venues in Florida and countrywide to send exhibition proposals to. It's also provided me with the funds to create and mail a professional press kit to these venues. Um, I chose to create this series because I think that women feel especially challenged today and I think that they will see that the women in my portraits are women who rose above their circumstances to achieve great things in their occupations and fields. For my second series, a series of commuter portraits titled All Aboard, Breaking Down Barriers, the grant allowed me to reach out to the Pinellas County School District to which I proposed and created a two-part lesson plan for high school students on the series with interactive questions and discussion elements. The series has a timely message which focuses on diversity and cooperation. So that's what I've been up to. <laughs> that's very exciting. It really, really is. Congratulations, yeah. Eileen. It's, it's wonderful. And you get uh, more of a chance to talk about some things you've got coming up in the next segment. Great, thank um, you. So next we've got Rachel Stewart. Rachel, what have you been doing during Hi, the grant period? Tell, tell us all about it. <laughs> I've been real busy. I have been um, doing new prints. Um, and I did have um, to deliver two prints to the Dunedin Fine Art Exhibition. I'm in a group called um, 24 Hands. And I'm very excited about that. I've been working on um, different issues and images that have to do with climate change. And um, then I had a wonderful time in Jamaica. I went um, immediately down there after I delivered my work to Dunedin Fine Art Center for the their show there. Um, I went down to Jamaica, um, carried down three prints, rolled up, put them in my suitcase, and took them down there so that they could be actually framed down there for the exhibition that was in um, July. I also helped um, install and organize um, that exhibition, which was at the University of the West Indies. And the name of the exhibition was Did Time Change? So that was very interesting. We had a wonderful opening and um, some really great work. Um, so I did that. That was a, a the the, um, the grant really enabled me to like fly down there, fly back, fly down there again, um, and be part of this um, large exhibition at the University of the West Indies. So then, when I came back, now um, I had to deliver two pieces um, of prints to the University of Tampa, and um, that show is going to open on Thursday. It is at the Furman Center for the Arts. Um, in the Foundation Artist Gallery. Again, it has to do with um, environmental change, climate change, and making a statement about what is happening in the, um, well, globally. Um, so that's what I've been doing, and I've got a few other shows coming up, and I'm also working on refurbishing a large sculpture that I had done quite a few years ago, and um, redoing that so um, I have um, some ideas about how to to do this sculpture and it's quite it's an eight foot piece of work so I'm trying to work on it so that I can rechange change it again yes I love that and I love that uh, this time period has given you the opportunity to you know to go back to Jamaica and be part yeah. Bring your art back to that community again as well, and know how much it means to you. Yes. So, well yes. done. All right. So, finally, let us see what Rootman Fred Woods has been up to during the grant period. Hi, Fred. Hey, how are you? I'm good. The question oh, is, what I'm, huh? <laughs> the question is, how are you? I'm good. Good. You want to know what I've been up to? Yes, I do. Okay. Cool. So. Uh, one of the things I've been doing was working on was combining my healing work along with my artwork. I've done a series of um, art shows and also actually done some healing at um, Creative Pinellas, you know, came in and did meditation and stuff like that. Also, too, one of the things I like to do with my painting is tell a story. So when I had my show at the factory, which was about healing, I actually sat there and walked around and told the stories. And most of the painting there was a show, another show I'd done 
people about mental health. And so we talked about the paintings, I shared the stories, then people shared their stories. And so kind of what I've been doing is, you know, creating paintings that tell the stories that other people can tell along with me. Right, and I see you've got one of your pieces behind you, yes? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's so, an older piece. Well, but it still falls into that um, contemporary surrealism that we talk about. Contemporary as surrealism, of, that's my uh, new right? thing. That's, that's what Cindy and I came up with. <laughs> so, so, I love it. I oh, love also it. too, I'm working with uh, Shelby, working on pieces of endangered species. So she's doing clay. I'm collaborating with Shelly, and she's doing clay, and I'm doing these drawings of animals that are going to be extinct because of we are constantly killing them. Well, obviously, art is a great way to bring consciousness to any important um, subject of any kind. So, well done, well done, all of you. Clearly, you have been extremely productive during the grant period and uh that has to be a, just very rewarding to know that you have the opportunity to move forward uh, with your work in meaningful ways with with the support of an arts organization like creative canalis mm -hmm. um so next we're going to go through and talk mm -hmm. to everyone about your plans coming up um you know for after the grant period ends and um, you know, what what your plans are. I know that you kind of touched on a few things during uh, this past segment, but don't worry about repeating yourself. Just go ahead and talk about some of the things that you're excited about pursuing um, in the coming time once the grant period ends. And we will go ahead and start with our artist laureate, Jake Ann Jones. Um, so I have a play that is the the other part of my artist laureate um obligations so this has um given me an opportunity to start fleshing out a play that i've been researching for a few years and um so we're supposed to have the first presentation i think october 15th um and there's going to be i think there's three or four presentations up to march of next year and they're public presentations. Um, that's a lot, you know, working in theater, I've been in theater for many decades. And normally, you don't really present so much like early on. Um, but I think that part of the, um, the artist Lori, a part of this process is about having outsiders engage with the work and the process in a different way. So it will be interesting um, to show uh, and have audience feedback at such a like early stages of, of the writing process. And it's mixed media because that's, uh, I work in a, a variety of different mediums. I also write for film. Um, and so uh, it will incorporate a music. I work with composers quite a bit. Um, I've had, uh, this is my third play with music that I've written. Um, so the process is very, uh, there's a lot of moving pieces when you're doing a mixed media work. So yeah, that's, um, that's what is coming up immediately in terms of my work. And then, like I said, the festival, um, I'm, I'm the organizer for the festival. So there's, that is, um, that process is, in, you know, it's always when you're working with, we have like over 30 different artists that we're going to be working with artists or presenters over the three days. So um that is um keeping me very busy but it's very exciting uh afrofuturism combines um discussions of past present future technology commerce uh science science fiction um and just how uh, african people are going to continue to have a presence in the in a world that is seems to be setting them up to to not live right so afrofuturism is a conversation that's been going on since the mid 90s and when i when i started talking about it with my afro quantum experience guests like nobody had really heard of it and i was like oh well let's do a festival so it's giving me the opportunity to write about it i just wrote a piece for the creative panelist blog and 
sort of bring, uh, find sponsors and bring everybody into this conversation about really wellness and what will be the, uh, the future for African-Americans, especially in a place like this in the South, uh, these are kind of questions that we should be talking about. It's a social justice project, really, Afrofuturism, if you think about it. Right. So people can follow along, obviously, with your blogs and, and your progress entries at creativepinellas.org, but also um, a lot of your progress, obviously, people can follow along on jokeandjones.com, right? Yes. <laughs> I'm not really good at updating my website. I, I, I knew that's what you were thinking. I knew that's what you were thinking. So anyway, but they can check the website, and uh, but they can get in touch with you too through creativepinellas.org and make sure that they know what's happening with you and, and you know where they can catch the festival and so on. Right. Congratulations, Jake, Thank man. You. It's all very exciting. Thank you. All right, let's talk to Shan Leah. Uh, you already were talking about publishing a second book uh, yourself next year, but uh, you know anything else you want to promote? Anything at all? Well, there's a lot of things that uh, kind of go along with that that I'm working towards. Uh, for example, my first one, *Beauty, Beast, and Men*, it was um, either a finalist or shortlisted for three different literary awards, and. Uh, award season is just about to open up. And so I'm going to be putting my second bands of a small hurricane out as much as possible. Um, I feel like if I can at least follow in the same footsteps as the first one, even though it's self-published, I will consider that a huge success. Um, after that, my, my third book I'm in the process of, and that's called Sex for Poets. And I've recently realized that it's probably going to be broken into three. So I am just wrapping up the first book and if you go to my website, which is shanlea.com, you can find a link to read the work in progress. So with Sex for Poets, I'm doing something a little different. I thought about how I can find readers before the book is launched. And so I'm posting the work in progress on both Substack and Wattpad um, for the younger readers if they're interested. But Substack, I really adore. I think it's a great, it's a great um, website. So every time I finish a chapter, as long as I feel like it's a decent rough draft chapter, it goes up on there. And before the book is comes out, it'll be fully edited um, probably 10 times over. But just for fun, I'm posting the work in progress. And we'll kind of see if that helps with marketing efforts that usually happen after the book release. Um, other than that, it's just writing, 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 and editing, editing, editing. But the book that's out now, tell us the name of that again. And can you just give us a little sneak peek at the plot so this is band of a small hurricane um it is in a nutshell about a 14 year old girl coming of age in the florida keys in 1967. so it follows her relationship with her father who um is he's kind of a local hero or he was in his youth and he's kind of chasing his food and heroism and uh, a woman comes to the Keys from Germany. Her brother is looking to jump from the side of a ship between Havana and Key West, and she's looking for a boat captain who's crazy enough to rescue him from the waters. And that is the character's father. So it follows this rescue attempt by the father and the daughter, their relationship kind of coming to a head and pulling apart because of the secrets he's keeping. Um, but there's hippies, drugs, running away, you know, teenage sex, all the good stuff. But uh, it's actually very much based. It's a little semi-autobiographical. Um, my grandfather helped rescue a man who jumped over a German ship um, in 1971. And he was the boat captain who pulled him out of the water and was shot at as he tried to make his way to shore. And when that man jumped, three others saw their chance for freedom and they jumped as well. So my grandfather ended up saving four men from the middle of the ocean. And for this book, I interviewed both my mother and father. The three of us all grew up in the Florida Keys, but they grew up in the 60s. So this book is a huge collaboration of my own memories, my mother's memories, my father's memories, and this legacy that my grandfather left behind. Um, so it's fully fiction, but in so many ways, it's very much nonfiction. I love it. I love it. That's a, that is great subject matter. The keys oh, in the sixties coming of age. Yeah. It was a lot of fun to write lots oh, of research. Yeah. I mean, even down to what kind of gum was carried in the supermarket. <laughs> lots of research. Thank you so much, Shan. That's, that's amazing. Eileen Marquez. 
Hi. Hi. So, tell, tell us what you got coming up. Sure. Um, for my Goddess series of inspiring women portraits, that's going to be exhibited at the Woodfield Fine Art Gallery on Central Avenue in downtown St. Petersburg in March of 2023, which is also a National Women's History Month. Um, I need to complete four new paintings prior to the exhibit, so I'm going to be pretty busy because the portraits take me a long time. I like for them to be as realistic as possible so that the visitors really feel that they are standing next to the actual women. I indicate in the exhibit that they can take a selfie with their favorite woman. Uh, it, you can see the portrait of Dolly Parton behind me. I'm midway through the painting, which uh, if you look very closely, you can see that her dress is made of real lace and there will be rhinestones in her guitar because you know Dolly likes her bling. <laughs> so I'm excited sure. about that. Yeah, I'm really excited that that exhibit of Inspiring Women co coincides with the National Women's History Month. And my commuter portraits will be on display at Gallery 120 at the Largo Library in April and May of 2023. This exhibit will contain visitor interactive elements along with commuter memorabilia and photos, etc. I'm currently working on all the special interactive elements that will be part of the exhibit. If you can see the reproduction of the painting of the two women behind me, what I'm going to do with two of the paintings, and that's just a copy of the painting, is I'm going to cut out one of the faces, set up like a platform so that viewers can stand behind the painting, uh, stick their face in, and they can take a, have their picture taken as sort of part of the painting. So. There's just different interactive elements I like to add to the exhibit so that it comes uh, more meaningful and alive for them. So, and I hope everyone will come out to these exhibits. So I'm excited about them. That's that's amazing. That's Thanks. that's very exciting to have two exhibitions coming up. Congratulations, Eileen. That that's really that's really Thank wonderful. You. Thanks. Yeah, I'm a painter, but I try to mix it up and try to make the exhibits a little bit more interesting. So, so I come up with these ideas. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, okay, Rachel Stewart, tell us what you've got coming up. Um, I have, I've got a lot of things coming up. Um, again, I'm part of this um, 24 hands corrective, which is really very um, exciting. And um, the, uh, we have a couple shows planned. One's coming up for Pasco Arts Council in October. And then we're going to have a large, it's about, um, there's more than 24 in there now. It's, it's gotten quite large. Um, it's a Brooklyn Creek Preserve in January 2023. And that will be at the Environmental Education Center. Again, it, uh, it's focusing on the environment, you know, which is what I've been doing for the last two years. Um, and then the other thing is, um, yes, and about next week, I have to ship my work off to an exhibition. I got accepted into the 32nd Annual All Florida, All Florida Jury Exhibition, which is going to be in Stewart. So I have to ship my work, which is always such a, it's a three foot piece, a sculpture, and that's always um, very challenging. <laughs> to make sure it gets there and get back, and that's in Stewart. Um, and um, yeah, those those um, three things will be keeping me busy, especially for the one at um, the Booker Creek Preserve, which is in um, Tarpon Springs. Um, and that's um, lots of work to do and new prints. So that's what's going to keep me busy up until January. Yeah. Very exciting. Very exciting. Not only, uh, you know, as everyone I will talk to, uh, I haven't forgotten you, Fred. I just wanted to comment. Everyone's just been so productive, not just during the grant period, but these exciting plans coming up is just uh, very exciting to hear about. So, Fred, you've got some stuff coming up, too. Tell us about it. Uh, <clears throat> one of the things I'm working on is um, speaking with someone about having a show in Sarasota. So one of the biggest things I want to do is um, stop um, moving outside of um, St. Pete and start showing my work elsewhere. Um, also, too, I've been applying for shows, you know, in other countries and also in out of state of Florida, you know, because um, I would love to tell the story of what I do. 
I call my work art for the soul and they all have a story. So I just want to share that with other people. And you were talking to me last week about something interesting about doing, doing, uh, you know, it, it's kind of just in the formative stages, but of combining the healing work and, and your art into kind of yeah. one endeavor. So yeah. if you don't want to really give that away, that's fine. But, you know, no, I, I, think, I think it's an interesting concept. So you may want to share that. So, you know, most people know that I do healing work, uh, Reiki, Theta, and also um, a life coach or intuitive coach. And one of the things I did was combine the two. So what I do is I, I would take a pendulum and I would open up all of your chakras and then I have a pad and then I just draw what I see and then we we'll discuss it afterwards. And if there's some healing that can be taking place, I, I will go ahead and do that. So far I've, I've done eight people in my practice and it's all turned out really, really cool. So on the 17th at um, First Union Baptist Church, they're having a, uh, a wellness fair or a psychic fair. So I will be there launching my new practice. That's exciting. Yeah. It really yeah. is. Um, so I just want to add a little addendum about uh, Shan's book, um, Bands of a Small Hurricane, will be available for pre sale on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and you can get signed copies on shanleelea.com. Yes. Um, there's uh, 500 available there. So mm -hmm. we just wanted to make sure that we got that in. It's going to be released on October the 4th. Oh, okay. Thank you. Of course, my pleasure. Um, so uh, I just want to say well done, everyone. Uh, it's very clear why you were selected among our 2022 professional artist grantees. And um, I just think you're all amazing. Uh, thank you so much for sharing who you are, what you've been doing, and what you've got coming up. And uh, we are going to close down this Creative Pinellas Professional Artist Grantee conversation for right now for 2022. I thank you all so much for participating. And now please wave goodbye to everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.